Following the depression of 1929 in the early 1930s, two well-known properties had their beginnings in Elkins Park. The Dominican Retreat House and Convent of Our Lady of Priol and Temple University's Tyler School of Art. In Cheltenham, at the turn of the 20th century, there were more millionaires per square inch than in any other place in the country. In 1932, Mother Gregory and the Dominican Sisters of the Congregation of St. Catherine de Ricci purchased the mansion known as Estelle Manor, which millionaire William Lukens Elkins had erected to be his summer home in Elkins Park. It was from William McIntyre Elkins, the grandson of the builder, that the Dominican Sisters actually purchased the property, consisting of a 42-room residence and 28 acres of land. The Dominican sisters originally purchased the house for $100,000. When the sisters took possession in July 1932, the house was unfurnished except for two or three pieces of furniture and the Dick Winnington clock. Undaunted by financial difficulties, the sisters began to repair, renovate, and furnish the house. The builder, William Lukens Elkins, had four children, William Jr., Ida, who married George Tyler, Eleanor, who married George Widener, and youngest son, George. Ida and husband George Tyler lived in the house which later became the Temple University School of Art. William Lukens Elkins was a traction magnet. His and P.A.B. Widener's Philadelphia Transportation Company, which was the beginnings of the present-day SEPTA, controlled all the trolley lines in the Philadelphia area as they were routed to Cheltenham. Youngest son, George, gave $100,000 to build the present Abington Hospital. George's son, William McIntyre Elkins, was married to Linda Morrison Harrison, who was interested in modern art and liked collecting the paintings of Pissarro, Matisse, Renoir, Degas, and Van Gogh. It is interesting to note that upon her death, her paintings went to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which was the beginning of the present museum that was built. William McIntyre Elkins' entire book library, including collections of Oliver Goldsmith, Charles Dickens, and Americana, is featured in the rare book department of the Free Library of Philadelphia. With Elkins' bequest came the gift of the room itself with all its furnishings. The Americana collection contains an original Columbus letter in 15th century Latin on the discovery of the New Islands of India and a copy of Amerigo Vespucci's map of the New World. Charles Dickens' collection contains the original serial edition of the Pickwick Papers. Elstow Manor was contracted for in 1898 and completed in 1902. Horace Trumbauer, the architect who designed it, had also designed the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the Stotesbury, Morris Clothier, the Widener Mansion, and other structures in the Philadelphia area. Elstow Manor is located at Ashburn and Juniper Avenues and was patterned after an Italian villa. It remains a magnificent structure with a hand-painted ceiling in the ballroom and beautiful woodwork and marble throughout. The Dominican Sisters Retreat House offered a sanctuary for thousands of women each year who spent a weekend there in meditation and prayer. When the sisters originally bought the estate, it included the Dick Whittington clock, which dates from 1793 and is 12 feet tall. The legend of Dick Winnington was that he was a poor Langshire orphan who thought the streets of London were paved in gold 
and went there to seek his fortune. In the library of Elstow Manor is a collection of rare books that were originally collected by William McIntyre Elkins. The library is valued at $1 million. In the library are busts depicting Dante, Socrates, Thomas Jefferson, and Homer. When the Dominican sisters owned the library, it contained a set of Shakespeare, an atlas, books of international exportation, and obituaries of William Lukens Elkins Sr. and Jr. Elstow Manor also originally contained a dining room, breakfast room, music room, den, billiard room, circle chapel, and art gallery. What would become the Dominican Sisters St. Catherine's Hall was once a chicken yard and later a powerhouse run by coal supplying electricity for William Lukens Elkins' estate. In 1942, the powerhouse, coal bins, and garage were converted into a novitiate house and a chapel dedicated to St. Catherine de Ricci. Friar Couturier painted the frescoes and Stations of the Cross for this chapel. St. Catherine's Hall eventually became a retirement facility for the elderly sisters. Over the years, a well-known sister that could be seen on the property was Sister Joseph, who would regularly enter and exit the chapel in the standard black and white habit. In 1896, Horace Trumbauer erected Shelton House, a half-timber Elizabethan mansion which stands at the corner of Penrose Avenue and Ashburn Road. St. Dominic's Hall, an English-style mansion with dark paneling and etched glass windows depicting the Canterbury Tales, became a center for programs geared to specialized groups. Mother Catherine de Ricci was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1845. In March 1889, Mother de Ricci made her perpetual vows Other well-known buildings and shrines on the Dominican Retreat property are Gregory Hall, Our Lady of Fatima Shrine, built through donations at a violin concert, Banjo, the Italian garden with its beautiful purple lilacs, the Hermitage, a statue in memory of the Tobins, Our Lady of Lourdes Shrine, and St. Joseph's Shrine. I grew up across from the property and my oldest sister would become a third order tertiary sister. Well-known sisters include Sister Helen Cecilia, Sister John Joseph, Sister Eileen, Sister Marie Melnick, Sister Carmen, and Sister Fidelis Beck, who took care of the landscaping and operated a greenhouse on the property. My childhood home in Lamotte is an historic part of Cheltenham, as it was the first training camp for black troops during the Civil War. After researching the original ownership of the house, it was discovered that the butler of George Elkins, a man named William Ritchie, was possibly the owner. In the early 1900s, the Tyler School of Art campus was once an apple orchard. The art school's ownership is traced back to Stella Elkins Tyler, who was born in 1884 and married George Frederick Tyler. Her wedding gift was a Georgian house on Penrose Avenue, built by the famous architect Horace Trumbauer. Mrs. Tyler, an accomplished pianist, also developed a great interest in art, which began when her children went to art classes in Philadelphia. In 1934, Mrs. Stella Elkins Tyler donated her estate to Temple University with the intent that it would become a center for the advancement of the arts 
and individual creativity under the direction of Boris Bly. The curriculum of the Tyler School believed that the well-rounded artist should be able to express oneself equally in every art medium. The student entering the Stella Elkins Tyler School of Fine Arts had to undergo working experiences in painting, ceramics, metalwork, carving, etching, and lithography. By coordination of art history and general history, the students of Tyler School learned to understand the development of art as a function of historical events. Boris Bly, professor of sculpture, an apprentice to Rodin, taught Stella Elkins Tyler and could not afford a large property for her early art school. He convinced Mrs. Tyler to give her home to Temple University. During the first year of the school, it was known as the Oak Lane Country Day School, where Bly taught children. During the second year, the words Stella Elkins Tyler School were carved on a marble panel over the front door of the main Georgian Terrace building. Bly became a dean of the Tyler School and his final philosophy was education and art are life, not a mere preparation for living. Bly's belief in the healing power of art therapy and his belief that art was a good psychological therapy was later practiced with his work with soldiers during World War II at the Tilton General Hospital at Fort Dix, New Jersey. This pioneer work in art therapy became connected with the Department of Psychiatry of the Medical School of Temple University. Many photographs have been captured that still remain in the archives of Tyler School of Arts Library, which show the soldiers painting, soldering, and engaging in other forms of art expression. Tyler School of Arts work during the war years with wounded and sick veterans show that education, psychological understanding, and creative abilities will play an important role in the art education of the future. In 2006, after 74 years of being located in Elkins Park, plans began to move forward to sell the Dominican Retreat property. At that time, Sister Carolyn Krebs, OP, president of the congregation, was quoted as saying, the beauty of this estate is from another error, and we recognize that the people who came here today for that deeper spiritual peace have new needs. Our hope is to carry forward our spiritual mission in new ways. Maintenance of the estate became increasingly difficult because of rising repair and energy costs. Potential owners of the property became Westrom in 2007 and Food for Life from 2008 through 2010. But in 2010, ownership of the property reverted back to the Dominican Sisters. Temple University's Tyler School of Arts plans to move to Philadelphia began in 1997 and culminated in the completion of a new four-story building on Temple's main campus in Philadelphia in the fall of 2008. Also in Lamont, which borders both historic properties, is a vegetable garden which was once owned by George W. Elkins. My earliest memories of the garden date to my grandpa Frederick Stitz tending the garden and growing scallions and tomatoes. My uncle Fip and my father also grew vegetables there. Other well-known gardeners have been Verrill Palmer, Mary, Frank Triplett, and Charles Burry. There are possible future plans for an historical museum for Lamont on the property. What does the future hold for these two properties in Elkins Park? 
Many newspaper articles in the Philadelphia Inquirer have posted this same question. Food for Life planned for holistic retreats, workshops, seminars, yoga, weddings, and banquets to be held on the property of the Dominican Retreat Estate. As for Temple University's Tyler School of Art, there have been plans to build a Lucretia Mott Visitor Center and an Emancipation Park. Whatever the future may hold for these properties, it has been my hope through the airing of this documentary that each property can be on the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission's list for historic preservation and landmark status. It is also my hope that anyone viewing this documentary will want to travel to Elkins Park and truly remember it as an historic and beautiful locale to visit.